Hi guys, it's me Julia. I'm back again with Kiln Opening 14. Uh, it's been a little while, hope you're doing okay and uh, I'll just get straight into it because I have a few pieces. So first up I'll show you these. These are a little herd of moo cows, highland cows. So there's three and they're all done with uh, iron oxide with a little bit of birch on the flowers and this one he has iron oxide on his horns but the other two have birch on their horns so a little moo. They were uh, requested months ago and I've only just got around to doing it with me moving. Okay, next one. I'll do this one. I've got a large version of this in the garden and I decided to make a small one to go with it. It's just a little sunflower with some uh, Amaco iron on the uh, little seeds there and Amaco marigold on the leaves. Just a little uh, bottom on there. So it's very sweet. I really like it. Uh, next, where am I going? I'm going to show you this one. So I fancied making at some point a wall decoration uh, of chain mill. So I had to go at making a little bit of chain. I didn't get the correct um, linkage but this is how it turned out and it's actually pretty good as a puzzle but Jacob decided he really loved it and now he wants a necklace made from it <laughs> made with smaller links but that's just iron oxide quite thick and it has in some places it's gone kind of um, really has taken on that rusty kind of look but I love that as well uh, just a little plate that I had that I made with scrap leftover clay that's just birch with cinnabar maple birch maple cinnabar on there just to see what the reaction was I only did one coat uh, three coats of birch and just one coat of cinnabar just to see uh, if it could get that bubbly reaction, which it did. Just a little test plate. This one, again, it was just a, a scrap piece of clay that I had. I cut out a hexagon, slip, uh, humped it over a, a ball, and just did a few random dots of uh, kind of stroke and cord in two different blues and uh, beige and then just encircled each of the little colours with some light flux and I did three cuts of that and then covered it in birch, make or birch. Just a nice little kind of sweetie dish but it's actually it's worked out well. On that note of uh, humping and slumping I made these bisque balls of different balls that I have and then some small ones nice flat bottom and this one has a rounded bottom so they work really really well and the uh, the clay just pops out when it's dry if you do it on the inside so I'll show you what I have done this one I did a coil ball just messing about and seeing how the clay worked with the bisque molds it doesn't have a bottom on so I knew it would either need to be plain or it would uh, need oxide. So I did it in iron oxide again 
seems to be one of my favorite things at the moment and the girls that I go to uh, a group on a Tuesday I'll be teaching them a little bit about uh, oxide so they some of those are having a little go of it as well because you can get a nice even color without it sticking to the kiln shelf uh, the only thing is it's not food safe so this will be going in the garden for bird seed or something sweet like that maybe a candle on the same theme again whilst playing I decided to have a go at uh, making some weave this was just a spur of the moment not planned totally winging it uh, I had a cutter which has four or five rollers on it which cut this thin they're all stable that you can't move them it, and it cut thin strips uh, it's for tagliatelle I think so uh, I just thought I would have a go see what it would be like to see if I could do some kind of lattice or weave and then I didn't know what to do with the ends so I just twisted them and they're not even because I, it wasn't planned but and it was drying out and cracking terribly again washed pack iron oxide I really like that kind of washed really washed back look and again that one will go in the garden but as you can see if I show you my ball again this one I did on the outside and this one I did on the inside so and they just worked so well put that one down carefully and the last one that I did with those molds this is my 20 minute ball I had 20 minutes left and I had clay to play with um, at my Tuesday group so I decided to do a full-on straight coil ball it's quite heavy because it's a little thicker with it being coil and I scraped the bottom of the coils to try to get it flat and smooth it has cracks a little bit where the coils have come away and as you can see on the bottom there is a little bit of seepage coming through there but it didn't stick and the little crack that's come away there you can kind of see through so it wouldn't hold liquid but for 20 minutes I think it was a pretty good um, ball and that is three blue rutile and I think two ancient jasper both by Amacor but for 20 minutes I think that's okay since hand building takes a lot longer usually right where are we next okay we've had a little idea with the group that I go to on a Tuesday that we're going to do a little market at some point for all of our excess pieces so um, we've been making little things like this little tea bag holder it says dirty old bags so there's a little stack of them there just little plates all saying dirty old bags and that is in amico celadon iron it's really cute i love them they're so cheeky okay the next thing i'm going to show you is a bit of a glaze fail so i have these i was going to do a tutorial video just on basic slab rolling and uh, a basic form made with uh, a4 paper size piece but i didn't like it so i didn't pour it out <laughs> and this was the forms that i've been making with that just some simple forms that i was teaching one of the girls that i got to the group she wanted uh sorry she wanted to um do something different so i just show her how to show her how to do this um basic form however this is amico blue rutile 
hang on, what's that? That one. Did I say a blue rose tile and ancient jasper? That one. <laughs> I can't remember. My brain is just not working. So I had a little pattern roller on the side and it's supposed to be, let me just show you an example, this is blue rose tile. I put little blobs of uh, amico iron around to just try to get a little bit of um, movement but it's gone this honeycomb colour with cloudy in the bottom it's not really shiny and so I did contact Amaco customer service because they have put a new formula of blue, blue root tile out um, and that was four generous coats I'm a generous glazer and they said, put another couple of coats on. I'd already used two thirds of the bottle, making the pieces that I did. And I think it could be something to do with where they were in the kiln. It goes to a hot corn six, I think, at the community kiln. So I might send the smallest one back through just to see if a different firing does something different. If not, I'm just going to cover them in oatmeal and let that blue come through so that's those and on the same uh, because it was a new glaze to me as well so it was kind of testing the glaze out i don't have my kiln up and running yet uh, i have to wait till spring to get the groundwork done so i this is another one of the same kind of dishes just an a4 sheet of paper to make a template and you cut the corners out and fold it all up it's super super simple um and this one has a, a kind of pattern like this and look at the color this is ancient jasper amico three really good cards but really unusual some people get it to break kind of blues these are more kind of greys and almost like a black I think and the red really it's almost like a really rusty red really different and works really well on the texture so I showed you this little one so I'm missing two of these this is one of my little um, flower sets Again, it was something that I was going to do on a tutorial, but then I decided that I didn't like the look of it. So this is three. There's, I think there's a smaller one and a larger one still in, must be in one of the kilns at the art centre. And this is Blue Root Tile. So, like, just so vastly different. That was in the same kiln. So massively different. I stumped. So just three little dishes there and it would be a stacking set of five. They've just all got, I didn't do much glaze on the bottom because I didn't want it to drip because the little feet are so thin. Um, but even on the bottom where it's got one, two cuts dripping over the edge, you could still see some blue. So yeah, have no idea with the other one. And blue root tile again on this little pot that I made. It's my friend said it's like a little pot puree uh, dish, but you could do kind of a lot of things with it. I put three little lugs on, but one fell off. So it has rather than put no um, color on it, and I glazed the bottom just to have a little try. And you can see where the the stilts were but it's it's smooth I managed to get it smooth and it's again because it was going on a stilt I didn't do uh, too many coats on it and it came out with blues it's a it's kind of a cloudy blue though so I'm not it's not something that I would buy again and where haven't we been? This one. One of my favourite uh, glazes 
is Make or Birch and this is just plain old Make or Birch. I did a slab uh, piece, a long slab piece for the build and then pressed in these little houses to just make really cute little rows of houses. Just a really nice plant pot. I made it for a plant that I bought. However, my measurements must have been off or the kiln shrunk a lot more than I'd calculated and it doesn't quite fit. So I need to find a new plant for this pot. So that's that one. And then kind of on a similar theme, and I think that's the last piece. Yeah, I think I've shown everything else. So these are something I made uh, Christmas. So I'm only just getting around to showing them now because I forgot on the last one. Oh, there's another piece I forgot as well. So um, I'll go get that and add it on in a second. This is some little houses. How cute are they? I loved making these just before Christmas. I have a church. He has the little doors there at the side and he has a little uh, cross here and his little steeple. Little tall house. Little window here at the side on both sides. A little chimney less house because I forgot to put a chimney on him. All of the lids come off so you can put uh, lights in in these ones and he's the small, smallest like a little bungalow there's a little light set inside them so really really cute so this is a piece I made for my son and it is a tea light oil burner so it's like a little place here for your tea light to go in a removable cover for your wax or your oil and there's actually a little cup there that goes in that way that you can remove the tea light like that and that is Amico Celadon Obsidian all over three coats with um, different layers of single coats of Blue Lagoon seaweed and texture turquoise I think it was and what I usually do is just do one coat of each and then see how it's looking and add another coat of each on top of that leaving usually seaweed on the top if I want like a glossy green or blue on the top if I want like a blue finish like this one the blue lagoon um yeah not not been used yet but so that's it i think looking around you've seen everything that was quite quick i think probably because they were all quite similar muted colors not much to explain so thank you so much for watching my videos i'm now over 400 subscribers which is absolutely amazing and i really really appreciate every single one of you so if you'd like to see some more content please like and comment um, if you want to see any of these being built maybe not the cows because they're a real labor of love um, extruding all of that hair yeah. on these little fellas is uh, you know it's all individual hair it's not just kind of scratched in um, but if you want to see a coup in the making I'll do it uh, so that's it for now and I hope you have a really great day and thank you so much. Bye.